Imagine this. It's a late summer night, and you're chilling on your PC. You're playing some RE7 because RE8 was so good you wanted to go back and play it. Jack's chasing that ass, and right when you think you're getting away, video begins to play, displaying something you can't explain. Without context, it seems odd, but with the backstory your friend gave you, you understand why it's so dark. At that moment, you've been exposed to a mystery. Curiosity envelops you. So you dig. and you get nowhere, but it still bothers you. Fast forward and you exhaust all options, leaving the mystery to sit there indefinitely. As a curious mind with other obligations, you're able to move on with your life with the knowledge of a dark piece of online content within you. But for someone like me, who likes to investigate creepy shit like this, I'm left with an empty shell that never reaches a resolution and never ends up in a video. At least, until tonight. Welcome to Unsolvable, a show where I invite you to help me solve a mystery. The premise of this series will involve the presentation of an online obscurity that I'm having trouble cracking, my full investigation thus far, and the invitation to assist me in solving it. Each subsequent episode in this series will feature an update from the previous one, with a new case being presented thereafter. With that being said, Let's quit beating around the bush, and let's get started. Right here. What's something your best friend? The Walmart store around the corner, and little Joey down the street that's always trying trick shots on the b-ball goal he got for his birthday last year have in common. Might it be owning a six pack of plain white tees? Having every flavor of canned G fuel? No, 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 no. It's a song on their playlists that captivated the world nearly a year prior. It's called Somebody That I Used To Know by Gautier, and by this point, it needs no introduction. The music video is interesting, displaying what's implied to be a naked Gautier against a blank wall. He initially looks confused, however with the context of the song, it makes sense. As the track progresses, the wall fills itself with abstract art, and by its midpoint, it then covers his entire body. By 2 minutes and 20 seconds into the video, we're able to notice the camera pan out to introduce his co-artist Kimbra. She approaches him, appearing to forcefully sing to a regretful Gautier. This entire section seems to represent a broken couple that split apart and faded away fostering a generation of adolescents and adults alike that related to it in some form or fashion. It's a great song, I won't deny that, and soon after this video hit the mainstream, this four minute piece of media would inspire a firestorm of fan remakes that would trend throughout the summer. And everyone was doing it. There were remakes in the car, a version mocking Star Wars, an 80s remix, musical covers, and even direct recreations of a scene that appeared to have a pretty large impact on a ton of people. There was one video though that stood out among the others. A black sheep that hasn't exactly aged well. This one. Uploaded in March, at the peak of this trend's popularity, it displays a pink-wigged man singing to an apprehensive child. Have a look. Treat me 
like a stranger and it feels so rough. Oh, it's Now, without context, this video is weird. The kid admittedly seems uneasy at the prospect of singing for the camera, and at first glance, it's easy to assume that something nefarious is going on here. But the main question is, is there? Something I failed to mention earlier was that, as with any trend, not only were the adults doing it, but the kids were as well. While most of the reconstructions by them were lighthearted and ordinary, there are outliers like the one we just watched that raise suspicion. What I find fascinating though, is the overall reception to this entire trend's existence. You see, on almost every single video of people participating in this, the like to dislike ratio is indeed mixed. However, it very clearly leans positive in each and every case. The only video that I haven't been able to find a source for was the one with this child, and that's the basis for this entire mystery. Was this something that was controversial straight out of the gate, or was it something innocent that was twisted to fit a narrative? Most importantly though, out of all of them, why this video? Nearly an entire decade later, why is this significant? Grab those sodi pops and hang on tight. You and I are going to 2020. As the 2010s came and went, the popularity of the Gautier fan recreations had faded along with the song itself. Over the years, new ones would sprout up around the internet, however the frequency was merely a fraction of what it once was. Interestingly, by mid-2020, the phenomenon would encounter new life but it wasn't how you'd expect. On the 24th of April, a now suspended Twitter user named Quincy Bettingfield would unknowingly plant a seed. At John Podesta, what the fuck is going on in this video you made? Hashtag Pizzagate, hashtag COVID-19, hashtag SARS-CoV-2, hashtag coronavirus, hashtag New York City. At that very moment, the tweet was permanently in the public sphere. It wouldn't exactly gain much attention, but what it did do was capture the eye of a certain group of people that would help him signal boost this message to a wider audience. There exists a website that I believe is tied to Bettingfield called Red Pill to Nons. After running website analytics, it doesn't appear to garner much traffic. However, the references it links to do. On the very same day that the Bettingfield tweet was sent, a blog post was made on this site that referenced it, appearing to go slightly more in depth, essentially restating the tweet in its title. It goes forth to claim. What in the actual f Someone explain to me what the f is going on in this video. Source of video is a website called chartattack.com. It was posted in 2012. Below this, a list of links. The first two take us to much of the same of what we see here. The third presents us with a suspended Twitter account. And the last one? That's the one. That's the one we need. At 3.54 AM on the 25th of April, a CIA clown would post the entirety of the video to their 782 subscribers. The upload would amass nearly 8,000 views, with comments questioning the actual identity of the man in the video, expressing concern for where the child is now, and even making remarks about his uncomfortable body language. Out of every mention of the boy in the Gautier video thus far, this upload by CIA clown had gathered the most attention. 
It appeared that people had begun to dig in hopes of getting to the bottom of this. However, their efforts would soon fade, presumably because they realized they weren't making any headway. And through the next two months, the search for the boy in the goatee video fell mostly silent. July. A YouTube channel named Mikasa Ak reposts a screen recording of the goatee video. It was surprisingly effective, garnering over 200,000 views at the time of writing. Their description claims, this video disgusts me, followed by discoveries and postulations that were made by other people. The man in the video is not John Podesta. As some of you have said in the comments, this video is from 2012. Edit. The man in the video isn't Stephen Colbert either. I found this video on Twitter. I don't know where the original video is from. Stop saying that I'm related to this. Plus, this video is old. It was probably reposted again on Twitter after the Pizzagate scandal thing. I am not involved in these pedophilia things. I shared these videos to spread awareness. The comparisons to Podesta and Colbert we'll get to shortly. I wanted to highlight this upload because it served as somewhat of a revival to the lingering interest into this entire mystery. People were curious and it seemed to eat away at them, albeit temporarily. And as expected, others would once again pick up on it. Just five days later, the footage would once again be posted to Twitter. And then again. And then on Reddit. And then on Facebook. Each of these filled with audience comments surrounding new theories that unfortunately would all lead to dead ends. And so, as August came and went, discussion about the boy in the goatee video would once again fade into the back burner of the online void. There are comments here and there still discussing it, but they're few and far between. The frustrating thing about this though are the conspiracies. I feel that utilizing charged emotion to pin someone for something like this without definitive proof is ill-considered, especially if we all share the common goal of figuring out what exactly is happening in this video and if the kid's even okay. With that being said, as you might have guessed by now, I personally do not subscribe to any of the theories that are currently out there. I get the motive and I share the passion, however I'm here to get to the root of the problem, not convolute it. At the end of the day, after throwing every preconceived notion out the window, I just want to know a few things. For one, is this video as it seems? Secondly, if there's something darker at play, is the child okay? And if they aren't, where are they? Who is this man? And who is filming? If the child, who would be a teenager by this point, comes forward saying that they're alright and it was all just a big stunt, then case closed. And honestly, I truly hope things play out that way. If they do between now and the next unsolvable episode, then I'll absolutely update you about it. But as it stands, that's to be determined. As you've likely seen through the screen caps I've shared previously, John Podesta and Stephen Colbert appear to be targets number one and two by most of those that have seen the video. While at the outset of discovering the footage, I can see the resemblance. That's just it. A resemblance. A higher quality photo has also been circulating around the internet with a clearer picture of both the boy's face and the man in the pink wig. And after further inspection, it honestly doesn't look like either of them. You can argue that the nose might fit one and the mouth might fit the other, but at the end of the day, we have to keep Occam's razor in mind. If we're going to assume that it's either of the two, then we need to remember the highly public nature of their entire existence. Their faces are everywhere, and in this case, if they were to be holding this child against their will, then making this video and taking that high quality photo would be the single dumbest thing they could ever do. When people can pick something apart, they will. And in this case, this notion, combined with the lack of a definite match in their side profiles, effectively rules these two people out of the equation. 
If I'm being completely honest with you, I don't think this man's someone that's high profile. I can almost guarantee you that it's an ordinary person without an online presence. And that point is yet another roadblock in figuring this mystery out. Now, with that being said, what about the child? There are tweets like this one that have stood out to me, highlighting a missing boy from Hawaii named Benny Raposa. Admittedly, seems like a match. At first glance, his hairline matches up, the face looks similar, and on the surface, I can see why people jumped on this. The thing is, the timeline doesn't match up, but his story does bear mentioning. On the 20th of December, 2019, on his sixth birthday, Benjamin Raposa had disappeared from their home while his mother was at work. Allegedly, his sister's and mother's boyfriend were watching him and claimed that he must have slipped out the back door when they were unloading groceries. The family reportedly lives just steps away from the ocean and Benny was known to be nonverbal due to autism. To date, he unfortunately has never been found. I'll get into the details soon on why I know for an absolute fact that the boy in the video isn't Benny, but for posterity and so you don't waste your time, I wanted to bring this up. This theory did gain a lot of traction though. It seemed that everybody was hell-bent on believing that they'd successfully tracked down this child. However, that was far from reality. On the 20th of July, 2020, reports would surface from the Hawaii Police Department after catching wind of the Goatee video. An article about it claims the following. Police are informing the public that the boy seen in the YouTube video is not Benny Raposa as he's autistic and nonverbal. The continued spreading of these claims on social media is irresponsible and hurtful to the family. Now, barring the fact that the police had debunked this, I wanted to go forth and preemptively state that the video was uploaded in 2012. Considering the fact that Raposa was six years old as of December of 2019, he wouldn't have been born by the time it was filmed. While the two look similar, factually, there is absolutely no way that it could be him effectively leading this theory to yet another dead end. At this point, this is where I'd personally exhausted all surface level leads in my research. Everything so far has been viral claim after viral claim with highly circumstantial evidence. It seemed that people were trying to make headway, but the highly tenuous conspiracy theories were muddying the waters, so to speak. There had to be something definite out there. An article writer, a source video, hell, even a specific upload date, something. And so, I teamed up with a group of friends one night on Discord, and we got to digging. From here on, we need to find the origin of this video because I believe that, above all else, will actually take us somewhere. Something you'll notice straight off the bat was that when you perform a search for goatee video pink wig, the second result out of all of them leads to Pinterest. Heading there presents us with a pen that was saved by a chartattack.com. Ah, well, this looks like the one. Case closed? Oh, if only. So the link's dead, but it's a good starting point. Heading back to Pinterest and actually taking a look at it gives us two vital pieces of information. The date the article was made and the title of the post itself. So let's try something. Typical. What about this? Bingo. As we can see, Heading back to the year 2012 presents us with a plethora of website screencaps. 
However, frustratingly, none of them are from the date we need, March 14th. I've tried heading through archives of their news subcategory, which the article was posted to, and while I was able to find an archive from that specific date, conveniently, it was taken before business hours, meaning everything here is from the day prior. <sighs> yeah. It seemed that the only way forward from here was to reach out to the writers themselves for any sort of lead. My friend Latches wrote up a solid template to send to the various writers, and so we went forth with that angle of attack. To the website administrator and every writer we could find, we sent the following. Hi there. I'm reaching out on behalf of an independent investigation team looking into an article that was posted to a site that you were previously a writer for, chartattack.com. We're looking for info on a specific post that was written on March 14th of 2012 and are attempting to track down the source of a video that was mentioned in it. I know this is a super long shot, but this has caught the attention of various QAnon groups and the like. Those groups we do not represent. The article in question is mentioned on Pinterest here. Our purpose here is twofold, to find out what happened to the child in this video, if anything had, and to identify the man in said video. We don't subscribe to the myriad of conspiracy theories floating around the internet and are simply interested in finding the truth. If you have any information regarding this, it would be greatly appreciated. And we got a few responses. Hey Latches, I didn't start working at Chart Attack until September of 2013, so this was before my time. Sometime after I stopped working there, the old parent company Channel Zero seems to have sold the domain and most of the archive is missing. Looks like this was a news post, just linking to a goatee music video. I'm sure you can probably find it on the Wayback Machine. Hope that helps. Good luck. Hey Ryan, I don't think I have any useful information. It was posted to a music blog, and we didn't have any particular knowledge about the creator or who the kid was. It was just a, this is weird, embarrassing video. Damn it. While this doesn't progress the investigation outright, at least what it does do is provide context. This is a weird, embarrassing video. Sounds a bit lighthearted, but that's a good thing because the title of the article itself was what I wanted to touch on next. Analyzing that link, we're able to make out what exactly it was. Watch. Face Painted Kid Sings Gautier's Somebody That I Used To Know with Pink Wicked Maniac. The reason I bring this up is because just compare that title with, say this one, or this one, or this one. Out of every single article surrounding this trend, this specific one from Chart Attack is the only post that seems to mention the word maniac, a term that doesn't exactly have the most positive connotation. Now, I know I'm arguing semantics here, and they easily could have been facetious with a title like that, but why maniac? Why not Pink Wicked Man? Scrubbing through the other article titles reveals that they were mostly tame, so if they were joking around here, why on this specific video? Heading to Twitter and inputting that phrase into the search box also gives us some context. It's minuscule, but it's something. Like this account here. These people too have also been reached for comment and unfortunately do not recall the specific details. You know, I'd be lying to you if I said I wasn't frustrated. This is like trying to figure out a jigsaw puzzle with half the pieces missing. We sort of know what we're looking for, but putting everything together and painting the full picture has proven to be a convoluted mess. I know there's an answer out there somewhere. I know there is. I just need your help to find it.
review. So far, we've established a few things. The video was uploaded on or before the 14th of March, 2012. It features a child that appears to have green eyes and a distinct hairline. Given that this was nine years ago, he'd most likely be in his early to mid-teens by now. The man appears to have a distinctly shaped nose and wears glasses. The boy is not Benny Raposa, since he wasn't born when this video was created, and I strongly believe that this man is not someone high profile. The writers and everyone that have tweeted about the Chart Attack article have been contacted, and those that have responded do not recall the specific details of what they saw. Please do not reach out to them. Most of them are now caught up in other career endeavors, and nobody likes their DMs to be blown up. And so I ask of you, if you know anything about this footage, if you saw it back then or recall any specific details, if you remember any old school forum posts about it, please reach out to me at nightmareexpo at gmail.com with the subject line, Unsolvable Gautier. Any tip helps, and yours just might help solve this mystery. From a popular mid-2012 trend to conspiracy theories pinning a bizarre video on prominent public figures, the case of the boy in the goatee video is one that's immensely perplexing. The video, at face value, is strange and absolutely harbors the cornerstones of a suspicious piece of media. What I just can't subscribe to, though, are the rumors surrounding it. Once again, I hope, I really hope, that someone involved with this video comes forth and claims that it's just that. A weird video, but an innocent one. And if that happens, I'll be sure to update you on it. As my friend Gage put it though, unfortunately, the most likely scenario is that, much like World Corp, the source footage was probably uploaded anonymously to 4chan or the like. Someone probably saw it, ripped it, and reposted it. Since 4chan doesn't archive unimportant threads, the original post is most likely lost forever merely leaving us with three uploads to work off of. It's a possibility that no matter how hard we dig on this one, we won't find the original post, the name of the kid, or the name of the man. Unless an arrest warrant's found, a missing person's case matches, or those involved in this video come forth directly, the source and motive of this video just might forever remain a mystery. But that's a challenge more than anything. I've got faith that we can do this. For all I know, we might not get anywhere, but at the end of the day, at least we'll be able to rest, knowing that we damn sure tried. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you soon. I love you all. And good night.